Hi guys, my name is Borro Dante. Yesterday our Studio Pro updated to a new awesome version, so let's take a look at it. It has completely different interface for the preferences window with uh, sub windows like this. It has light theme now, customizable keyboard shortcuts and awesome new things in the brush engine. So if we go into the wetness settings of a brush, now we can see the setting right here, blur radius, and it's set to to flat or it can go anywhere in between what 49 and nothing and zero I actually haven't tried what like not full blur means well yeah this is actually really close to what Painstorm Studio has on Windows or actually on iPad as well but it's using OpenGL for the rendering so it's really slow this is an amazing feature it allows us not only create the smearing brushes like like this but also blur the colors in all directions so it softens the details under the brush stroke making things softer and of course the most awesome part about it is the flat option so flat is pretty much the kind of blending I'm using in Craft Pro, my app for iPad. And this type of blending allows you to blend the edge while painting along the edge like this. With no effort creating awesome soft gradients while maintaining clean and sharp brushwork. You don't have to use any kind of jittering to make the brush blend in all directions as I used to have to do that in previous version of our Studio Pro, in Procreate and in Photoshop. That's pretty much how things have been forever. I don't know why. When there's another army of apps that are made specifically for artists that totally embrace this kind of awesome blending, the ever-aging blending as I call it, and it works so much better. You can see this in Paint Tool Sai, in Clip Studio Paint, in Krita, Corel Painter, like there's so many apps that actually do this. But but the most popular ones usually don't do it. And finally, I get to use an app on iPad that's using metal, meaning it's really fast, it works with huge resolutions, and it has this kind of blending. This is the first time I'm able to use this kind of blending in a fast application. So yeah, this brush is actually pretty interesting, something I only discovered today as well. Maybe it's new, but I think it's not knew I was just dumb you can create a dual brush for the mixer tool I thought it wasn't possible but that was only because in the dual brush settings I never used each stroke setting but this way with dual brush and with the texture the pattern you get such an interesting very realistic and variable kind of brush strokes that it's just so awesome and it's really very much on the level with procreate in the ability of the brush engine to show something very realistic and not boring like the brush stroke is changing you can see in these areas it's always a different edge of the the brush stroke is changing and as a result we have a brush stroke that has two textures applied to it pretty much we have the static texture of the canvas these uh, canvasy dots I have on all my brushes and also the texture that is rotating to create a more variable look in this case, really loving this. I spent the whole morning playing around with this brush engine. It's looking really cool. So this is another clear advantage that Art Studio is getting for its brush engine comparing to Procreate. The ever-aging non-directional blending, the ability to apply two textures to the brush stroke, and of course I've always been praising the ability to work with two types of transparency in a simple color brush. So we have opacity and flow applied to the stroke at the same time it's a much better situation than what you can get in procreate so performance wise when I'm getting this big like 600 pixels and this is the size of the blending brush that is using two types of blending at the same time and I'm seeing like a noticeable drop in frame rate not sure if it's possible to optimize it I will love trying to figure it out whenever I get to this stage in my craft pro but in any case lucky clan the developer of art studio have way more experience in programming than I do so they probably 
probably know what's up. So yeah, that's for the brush. We'll play around with that a bit more. One other important thing I want to review is of course using the uh, keyboard, actual physical keyboard for the shortcuts. There we go, we're connected. I gotta say, the keyboard shortcuts are not as critical to me right now as they used to be, but whenever I switch to doing something in Photoshop on my desktop computer, I feel like it's just so good to have this immediate reaction of my hotkeys when I work on something. So still, for home on-table experience, where you just sit in one place, as I always do, having a keyboard to quickly manipulate settings and whatever is a huge deal. So this is amazing. I'm definitely using it, but probably not today. I hope that the work on the keyboard shortcuts isn't over yet for Art Studio because definitely a lot more features could be added to it. As you can see, it's already a pretty huge, gigantic list of what you can map. And by the way, something I didn't expect, but I was able to remap all the hotkeys from Command Z, Command D, Command whatever to control Z control D and whatever since I come from Windows I'm much more used to doing control something than command something it's a different finger to use so yeah I was able to change it and it totally works which is awesome but one thing I'm missing a lot like in here you can see these tool settings another department in the keyboard shortcuts it only has two shortcuts to set up which seems like it's almost a placeholder to add more stuff later and I'm really hoping that soon I'll be able to map increase and decrease brush size. This is super important to me. Another thing but there's probably some interference with um, iOS itself like I can move the canvas with the space and no it's not funny you actually need that kind of stuff because when you're using the keyboard you just want to stick with using the keyboard and doing everything except for drawing with the keyboard and just non-stop drawing with your pencil and nothing else. So yeah, you can move, you can zoom, and you can rotate, you can do pretty much everything you want. And it's almost the same it goes in Photoshop, except zooming is letter Z, that I'm going to change immediately to decrease brush size when I get to do that. Because right now this Z shortcut for zooming is like something you have to get used to. I probably will, but still, if it would be the way the Photoshop does it, it would be so much better, it would be control space but the problem is control space in iOS changes language like I would be okay with everything being command s but command s fires the search also doesn't work so maybe alt space would be a thing right oh there we go it actually <laughs> it actually works as a zoom right now Okay, alt space then. So R to rotate, space to move, and alt space to zoom. Yet there's still one thing that you will definitely notice that it's a problem if you are really used to navigating the canvas with space and whatever th this method. Like I'm gonna have to describe a scenario. So I move around, then I wanna zoom in, and then move around again. This is something you do a lot, you're not even thinking about it when you're using the hotkeys. So you move around, you zoom in, and you want to move around again. Right now, I managed to do it only because every time I change the command, I have to completely let go of all the hotkeys and then hold the new combination for zooming, like alt space. Now I zoom in, and now I have to let go everything again and then press space from start. If you'll try to do it the way I'm so hardwired now to do it, because Photoshop and any other desktop app does it I would hold space to move then I would add alt to that space without releasing space to zoom and right now it's not zooming because it's still in the space hotkey situation so I have to let go of everything and then press that again as I'm noticing it's not space alt it's only alt space that would work but pretty much these are the smaller things that are probably possible to tweak to change or to adapt to the only thing I'm really missing right now is the increase decrease brush size shortcuts like they exist but they're not customizable I still have to reach for the braces there's a lot more settings, a lot more changes to the app in all the departments of it. It's really awesome, really huge update. 
And so while my past self is doing a quick study of this Greek god, or whoever that is, Apollo, I think, I'm gonna tell you a bit more about some of the countless improvements in the new version of Art Studio. So first of all, as you may have noticed from the text on the screen, you can now map increase and decrease brush size with customizable keyboard shortcuts, and I already did, and it works. Well, it works, but exactly the way I expected, it works too slow. The way it used to work in our studio with non-customizable keyboard shortcuts when that was the braces. Like you have to press and hold for a little while to actually change the brush size to something that matters. But yeah, like, hopefully Lucky Clan would change that or maybe add another pair of customizable shortcuts for increase and decrease brush size more or something like that, like a bigger step. That would be cool. Another improvement is a better algorithm for brush smoothing. So you have a really good physics of like a string when you make brush strokes with smoothing on. And on top of that, you have the option of a global smoothing parameter, which is, I think, the most useful thing. If you want to go with smoothing, you want all of your brushes to just be smoothed. And if you don't want, you just quickly turn it off and preferences and nothing is smoothing anymore. I think that's a much better way to do that. Oh yeah, and another awesome improvement to the brush engine is the fact that any parameter in the dynamics settings for the brush, pretty much everything that is connected to pencil pressure or pencil tilt, it now has the curve control. So you can specify exactly in which direction and with which pace the parameter will be changing as you press harder or lighter or when you tilt, although I don't think it actually works with tilt, only with the pressure. It's kind of confusing a little bit because there's just one curve and another cool thing with the brush engine is tilt gradation that's that little cool effect that procreate also has that makes the brush stroke kind of being softly erased when it's further away from the tip as if when you're drawing with a sharp pencil the tip of the pencil is drawing stronger and as you go further away from the tip it becomes softer so it's creating a soft gradient when you tilt pretty cool adds some realistic variety to the stroke oh my god that's a giant giant cursor apparently it just scales up without redrawing itself when you tilt huh okay that was a bit scary but all right Another notable improvement is mask placed over clipping mask now modifies the clipping mask and not the base layer. So as I demonstrate right now, that's kind of like a fix, probably making the layers work a bit closer to the way they work in Photoshop. And that's not the only improvement in this version that brings layers work closer to Photoshop. So that's really cool. Another cool thing, which is something I probably will appreciate and actually use in the episodes is two new options for the brush cursor so when you make a stroke it can now appear not just as a circle but also as a triangle kind of like a pointer kind of cursor or the actual outline of the brush so I may use that I actually kind of forgot about the whole thing <laughs> that you can work with the cursor so I'll probably turn it on so you guys would have a better idea where exactly I'm painting at any moment when I'm talking about it or in the time lapse because sometimes you just can't see what's going on if I'm doing some subtle changes to the artwork. So yeah, that's pretty cool that there are now three options. It feels very rich in customization. Good stuff. Another cool feature that was added is the ability to change the speed at which sliders change any parameter. It works the way Procreate has it, so when you swipe directly on the slider, it changes exactly following your finger, but if you drag the finger away from the slider, it becomes more precise, like moving slower than your finger, that's pretty cool. So yeah, another cool thing that brings things closer to Photoshop is connected to the keyboard shortcuts. If you alt click or option click on any layer, you will actually select its alpha channel. On Windows and Photoshop, you do that with control click on a thumbnail of a layer. And in here, it's an option click, option tap on a layer thumbnail. 
There is also a cool halftone brush, which probably a lot of people will appreciate, and also the halftone filter. So now you can actually change the existing image or existing gradient to look like a halftone print that gives it a cool comic book or manga vibe. So yeah, that's it. For the rest of the improvements, you can download our studio yourself and check things out. And I thank you for watching if you did. I guess I did if you're here. Leave a like and subscribe. Tell a friend. Lend. Do whatever you want. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. I forgot to make a blooper.